Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. An Army chaplain is under fire for sharing a Christ book with chaplains. A Virginia Democrat forces church to let men into ladies' restrooms. And a record 103 million Americans are not in the labor force, 47 year low. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. A United States Army chaplain is now under fire for daring to share a book about Jesus Christ with other chaplains. The Blaze reports an anti-Jesus complainer is calling for a senior army chaplain to be punished and disciplined after he dared to share an evangelical book, electronic version, he emailed it using his military email to fellow chaplains, most of them Christian chaplains, to encourage them in their faith. Isn't that what chaplains are supposed to do, by the way? Uh, But in a letter sent last week Wednesday to the US Defense Secretary, Mark Esper, a nonprofit organization, the Militant Religion Foes Foundation, as we call it, led by Mikey Weinstein, an anti-Jesus complainer, requested that Chaplain Colonel Moon Kim should be punished for the quote, absolutely egregious and deplorable act, end quote, of sharing a free digital copy of a devotional book written by author John Piper, and he sent it to 35 other chaplains. The book in question is entitled Coronavirus and Christ. It's now written by popular evangelical author, John Piper, who is the founder and senior teacher of DesiringGod.com and also chancellor of the Bethlehem Bible College and Seminary. The letter also takes issue with the book's assertion in general that the coronavirus is now being used by God to warn sinners of the coming judgment. Piper wrote in his book, quote, calamities are God's previews of what sin deserves and will one day receive in judgment a thousand times worse. They are warnings. Calamities are wake up calls to see the moral horror and spiritual ugliness of sin against God, end quote. Isn't that profound? That destruction in the natural precludes and and previews the spiritual destruction that will come to humanity because of sin in the judgment. He's not saying it's caused by our sin. Sin doesn't cause hurricanes, he's not saying that. But calamities are a precursor of the wrath of God to come. I think that's profound. But it upset Mikey Weinstein who filed a complaint now against this chaplain who dared to share the ebook with other chaplains. And the Christian Post also notes in their coverage that the chaplain Moon Kim, Army Army Colonel, could be court-martialed. Well, I was a Navy chaplain and I was court-martialed, misdemeanor, for which I demanded, by the way, for praying in Jesus' name in my uniform outside of church. I say take the court-martial, Chaplain Kim, but a copy of Kim's email was obtained by the Christian Post and shows that the senior chaplain shared his book in a simple effort to encourage others. Kim wrote in his email, quote, This book has helped me refocus my sacred calling to my savior, Jesus Christ, to finish strong. Hopefully this small booklet would help you and your soldiers and their families and others whom you serve, end quote. Well, that sounds like a positive, happy email from a chaplain to his other chaplain colleagues. But one of them complained and then Mikey Weinstein took it national. Our thanks to the blaze for that report. Let's take a moment and discern the spirits. Uh, In this story, we have anti-Jesus complainers. Let's take a moment and discern the spirits. 
In this story, we have anti-Jesus complainers, not just uh, Mikey Weinstein, who we reported about ad nauseum on this program, and his Militant Religion Foes Foundation. Okay, he hates Jesus, we get that. But I see the spirit of God inside of the person he's attacking. Chaplain Moon Kim, sir, you are the tip of the spear for the spiritual love that you are showing to your fellow chaplains and to the soldiers whom they serve. Uh, and when you share Jesus devotional books, you are ministering love and the gospel to the soldiers who need it most in this world, who deserve to have Christian books. In fact, if, if the First Amendment says anything, not just about freedom of speech, freedom of religion, it says freedom of the press, right there in the First Amendment. And apparently there are some failed lawyers in this world who've never read the First Amendment of the Constitution and wanna ban freedom of the press because the words might be religious in that book that was distributed by email. The Bible says this in John 15, Here's looking at you, Mikey. If the world hates you, Jesus says, know that it hated me, Jesus says, before it hated you. And if Mikey hates Jesus first, well, he's gonna hate Jesus' followers like this army chaplain or this Navy chaplain. Let's pray for our enemies. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we ask you to bless the anti-Jesus complainers today. And Father, we might even uh, recall Psalm 109 in previous prayers, but, but today we ask, Father, you specifically bless him with repentance, with a spirit of repentance, that just like you knocked Saul off of his horse and he became Paul, the greatest evangelist, we pray you would turn this anti-Jesus complainer into an evangelist for Jesus Christ. Father, only you can soften his hardened heart. Reveal yourself to him and bless the chaplains with freedom in Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's take a short break. When we come back, a Virginia Democrat forces churches to let men into women's bathrooms. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. I'm Dr. Chaps. Jesus said in Matthew 24 that famine would be a sign of the end. And we are now facing a famine of biblical proportions in one of the poorest states in India where our charity has sponsored up to 259 orphans and children for many years. But now, there are thousands of people starving in the streets because of the unemployment there, and we've been helping widows, like the letter we received from Sanuri, who writes to us and says, I stay with my three children in the slum. I was washing plates in the hotel and earning bread for my family, paying house rent. Suddenly, I lost my income. After hotels were closed by the government, this was a shocking moment for me. Afterward, we could manage eating half a meal a day to manage a scanty ration for longer days. When there was no ration left for my family, I was quietly weeping outside with agony. An unknown fellow came and asked whether I am a widow. I said, yes. He wrote my name and address and asked me to collect ration from your office. I got that ration with joyful tears. I strongly believe that God helps the helpless during troubled times through benevolent people. You know the benevolent people she's talking about are you and your generosity when you give through our ministry is actually helping her to see God. Would you please donate today at 866-Obey-God Again, our phone number, 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D, and help us supply a matching gift. We've already given up to $10,000 to supply 100,000 meals, and there's somebody out there who could double that gift with one stroke of a pen. Please donate through our website, PrayInJesusName.org, and designate your gift to India Relief. Please give today. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. Our next story comes from CNS News, who reports. A Virginia Democrat, the governor of Virginia, Ralph Northam, has now signed an order forcing churches, churches, mind you, to let men into women's bathrooms. CNS says that not letting the virus crisis go to waste, the governor of Virginia, Ralph Northam, 
Democrat, signed a bill forcing women to share public restrooms with men, even in churches if those churches are open to the public. Governor Ralph Northam, a Virginia Democrat, signed into law on Good Friday, just before Easter, prohibiting, quote, all places of business offering or holding out to the general public goods, services, privileges, facilities, advantages, or accommodations, end quote. That includes churches that are open to the public. They cannot deny access to bathrooms to people 18 years and older based on the, what, what the law calls, quote, gender identity, end quote. Well, gender identity is a very specific term in Virginia law now. It goes on to define gender identity as follows, quote, the term gender identity when used in reference to discrimination in the code and acts of the General Assembly means the gender related identity, appearance or other gender related characteristics of an individual or without regard to the individual designated sex at birth, end quote. In other words, if a man feels like a woman, he can go into the woman's restroom. Doesn't have to have a sex change. He can expose his male parts to the ladies in your church restroom. Thanks, Governor Northam. Like we all needed to see that. In effect, the new law that Northam signed prohibits businesses and other private organizations from denying use of their ladies rooms or locker rooms or dressing rooms to adult biological males. The law, however, does include a narrow exemption for, quote, religious organizations that are not, in fact, open to the public, end quote. Oh, that's great. So, so thanks for that religious freedom. You just can't have a church open to the public anymore or you're subject to these rules. That narrow exemption also says, quote, the provisions of this section shall not apply to private club or place of accommodation owned by or operated on behalf of a religious corporation, association, or society that is not in fact open to the public. Close your doors, churches, or here they come. Or any other establishment that is not in fact open to the public, end quote. Well, that's helpful. At least we have religious freedom. We just can't be open to the public if we want religious freedom. The plain language of the law would seem to indicate that any Catholic or Christian school, an elementary school, a high school, a parochial school, if you have football or basketball games on your campus that would require by the state to allow adult men who are attending those basketball games to say that they are transgender and therefore women if a man says he's a woman, he can go into the women's locker rooms. You know, to see the opposing women's girls basketball team in, in the, their state of undress before or after the game, men can go in there. Thanks, Virginia. By the way, both houses of the Virginia legislature which passed that law, which Northern signed, are both controlled by Democrats. Our thanks to CNS News for that report. Let's take a moment and discern the spirits. Let's say you're a, a man going to a Catholic high school girls basketball game. And it's open to the public. You're going in there as a, as, as maybe you buy a ticket. And now, let's say you have an urge at halftime that you feel like a woman inside, so you wanna, go into the girls' locker room where the girls are doing their thing, right? Preparing to be great student athletes, God bless the girls, but now, because of Virginia law, you can violate their privacy, you can violate their safety as a man, because you have this feeling inside that is in fact a demonic spirit lying to you that you think you're a woman. Well, your right to have those private feelings, those demonic thoughts, does not extend to violating the privacy and safety of other girls. I'm sorry, this is God's law. Here's what the Bible says in Deuteronomy 22. 
A woman shall not wear anything that pertains to a man, nor shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all who do so are an abomination to the Lord your God. Let's pray about this, would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we pray against the demonic spirit of violation, the demonic spirit of rape that is now coming against churches with government approval, that is coming against parochial and and Catholic schools and Christian schools with government approval to violate little girls and women's privacy and safety. We call that demonic spirit out and we say you will be defeated. Father, we pray this is overturned and justice prevails for our women. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, uh, now 103 million Americans are out of the labor force. Giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. How is your marriage doing? I wanna tell you about an exciting new four-part video DVD Bible study series on God's plan for marriage. In this video series, we team up with marriage and family ministry expert, Vince Dacchioli. There are a lot of things that get in the way of uh, our ability to have a healthy marriage, but the way God intended it, he always wanted us to see his view of our relationship together. So everything we do when we talk about marriage or whether we're talking to men or whether we're talking to pastors and leaders, it all centers around this idea of vision. It's very important that we understand who God is and our relationship with Him is right in order for us to be able to live out really and truly Ephesians. And that also informs our role as men, how to love our wives. We can't really love them unless we understand the love of God. Exactly, so if you just think about love, we tend to think that love is an emotion. It's more uh, something that I feel, whereas the true definition of love, the way Jesus intended it, is, is not just an emotion, but it's, it's, a, it's charity, it's what I do. You know, to the degree that I am able to see my wife or my spouse through his eyes, that determines everything in my relationship. Yeah. And we go through the scriptures in four different parts. Part one is God's design for man and woman. Part two is godly roles for husband and wife. Three is sex and intimacy within godly marriage. And also God's plan for divorce. You wanna have this important four part video series available for a suggested donation of $30 if you call our toll free prayer line at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org you too can have a godly marriage. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. Our last story today also comes from CNS News. It reports a record 103,415,000 Americans are not participating in the labor force. Well, unemployment is at a record high, but participation rate has now sunk to a 47 year low. The nation's labor force participation rate reached a 47 year low of 60.2% of Americans are actually working. That happened in April. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, as the number of people not in the labor force jumped by six and a half million to record 103 million. The participation rate has dropped 2.5 percentage points since March, probably getting worse in May and it is the lowest it has been since the 60% mark recorded in January of 1973. Remember 73 under, uh, uh, I guess it was under Nixon, but uh, stagflation, unemployment, double digit inflation, unemployment. As expected, there was a government mandated closing of business this time in 2020 because of the coronavirus. But here's more bad news a record 103 million Americans, roughly one third of the population were counted as not in the labor force. The previous high for this number swelled in part because baby boomers are still retiring. That's fine, they should. 96.8 million in the month of March, 
labor force is made up of those who are unemployed and also uh, those who are employed. The remainder, those who have no job and are no longer looking for a job, you might know some people like that, are not counted as being part of the labor force. Only 133 million Americans were employed in April, which is 22 million fewer than March. A steep decline, steep fall off from the record 158 million that were counted as employed in December of 2019. You remember when the Trump economy was booming and everybody was working back in December? Well, the number of employed Americans had broken 25 records under President Trump. It's going up and up and up and up, stock market up and up and up and up until the coronavirus hit. President Trump was running on, on the economy as part of his reelection campaign strategy. At the same time, a record 23 million Americans were unemployed now, sadly, in April. 15.9 million more than in March. Consequently, the unemployment rate watched, reached a whopping 14.7% last month, the highest rate and largest month to month increase in the history of tracking that statistic, which dates back to January of 1948. Until March, the nation's unemployment rate had been either 3.5% or 3.6%, a 50 year low for the past six months and President Trump responded. He told Fox and Friends, moments after the worst unemployment rate in history came out, President Trump said, quote, it's totally expected. Even the Democrats aren't blaming me for that, but what I can do is I'll bring it back, end quote. And that's the news, or thanks to CNS News, and I think they, uh, they quoted Fox and, and some other sources for that report, thank you to those sources. Let's take a moment to discern the spirits. Yes, we believe the sickness is of the devil, right? Sickness, biblically, is a result of the fall of Adam and Eve into sin. And sin came through the temptation of the serpent and, and Satan inhabited us and therefore made humanity sick. Before that, there was no death, there was no suffering. In the future, when we have a new heaven and a new earth come, there will be no sickness and no death. Every tear will be wiped away. So the past is good, the future is good, we're stuck in the middle. In the middle, unfortunately, there is suffering. And we grieve with you, especially those of you who have lost loved ones in the coronavirus. And now we grieve with you who are unemployed, unable to pay your bills. We care deeply, which is why, by the way, we're working in famine relief efforts in India where the famine is probably 10 to 100 times worse than it's gonna be here in America. And yet the suffering here in America, we acknowledge and we stand with you and we pray for you. The Bible says this in Proverbs 21, there is a desirable treasure, in the oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man squanders it. Let's pray about this, would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we pray for those who are suffering, for those who are unemployed, for those who are retiring. Father, we pray they enjoy their retirement years, and yet, for those who are unable to pay their bills, God, we ask that you would be their provider, that you would be their hope, that things will only get better, that as we come out of this virus scare, that the economy will be booming and restored, not just by President Trump, but by Almighty God who heals our economy and prevents the famine that is coming in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break and I'll have a word to conclude the show. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today I wanna to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. I even demanded my own misdemeanor court-martial, and finally Congress agreed with me and reversed the bad Navy policy. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. 
Let's take action today for religious freedom. Would you sign that petition with me? Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Please visit PrayInJesusName.org and sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Thank you for watching. Please donate when you visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. If you need prayer today, pick up the phone and call us at 866-Obey-God. We'll see you next time. I'm Dr. Chaps. You know, some people are worried that we're losing our country, but they ask, how can we take a stand? We have produced now these two effective resources for you, a DVD video series and a book. Yours for a suggested donation of just $50, and we will offer you four videos on this disc to teach you how to become an effective Christian activist. For example, how did I send five million petitions to Congress? How do we organize and change bad laws or policies in 13 states? How did I run and win a seat in the Colorado legislature? We will also offer you this 30 day prayer manual, how to liberate the world in 30 days. They're both yours for a suggested donation of just $50. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org or write to the address on your screen or better yet, pick up the phone and call us at 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. You can learn the easy steps to take back your country. Call us today. The Bible says this in James 1, that pure religion before God and the Father is to visit orphans and widows in their trouble. You know, we have been sponsoring up to 259 orphans and children in one of the poorest states in India for many years, but now there is a famine of biblical proportions happening because of the unemployment there. We are sponsoring people who otherwise cannot feed themselves. We've given over $10,000 to feed up to 100,000 meals to the poorest of poor in one of the poorest states in the world. We need your support. We need your financial contributions. Can you help us? There's somebody out there watching who could give $1,000 or even $10,000 toward a matching gift for what we have already provided. Please donate today. PrayInJesusName.org is our website, or you can call us at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please help us feed the poor today. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.